what I love? Mech games. And who wouldn't? Who wouldn't love to get into a giant metal robot and drain destruction everywhere? Man, I can't wait until I get my own mech. But until mechs are available for commercial use, we'll always have video games. And there have been a lot of mech games over the years. So today, we're going to take a look at 5 of them, starting right now. Ranger X is a side-scroller running gun for the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis. You control a mech equipped with a jetpack and a bike. The game is pretty awesome as you fly around the levels looking for your targets. You ride your bike and you can even fuse into it. When fused, you have a new health bar, a faster rate of fire, your shots become homing and you can change sub-weapons. What's cool here is that if you have a 6 button controller, you can use the extra buttons to control the bike independently of your mech. The game features great colorful graphics, an awesome soundtrack, amazing boss fights and is overall a great game. At times, it almost feels like a treasure game despite being created by a completely different developer. This is a great hidden gem for the system and I highly recommend it. Iron Assault is a first-person mech simulator for MS-DOS computers. Despite the game coming out in 1995, I'm pretty sure it's using a modified version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine. Or at least an engine similar to it, as the walls are all square and there is no concept of height. Despite that, this is a really fun light mech simulator. The game immediately won me over with the intro and cutscenes, all of which mix real life actors with stop motion animation. As for the game, the controls are all fairly easy and straightforward. Your mechs are a bit slow to respond, especially when turning, but that's intentional. You're usually sent on search and destroy missions or defend missions and you're given a fairly wide range of options and controls, like giving you a small rear view window or the option to see through the eyes of your teammates, activate defense systems, lock on to enemies, that sort of thing. One cool thing about this game is that the buildings become damaged as you shoot them and you can enter enemy bases during your missions and clear them from within. Because you're slow to move, the best way to fight enemies is to keep an eye on your radar, lock on to them and fire homing missiles. But be careful, if you take too much damage you might lose certain functions like locking on, aiming, throttling or you might even suffer from erratic movement. Between missions you go to a Wing Commander style setup where you start in your room and can click on random objects to view your kill count, read about your next mission, equip mechs, change mechs, that sort of thing. Sadly, there's no one to talk to here, but maybe that's because I haven't been given any teammates yet. But hey, at least you can access the internet. If you're used to games like Mac Warrior 2, Iron Assault will probably feel a bit basic to you. But if you prefer a lighter take on Mac games, I recommend you check this one out. Gun Griffin is another first person mech game, but this time for the Sega Saturn. Unlike Karen Assault though, this game is even lighter on the same aspects, as your mech can rush at high speeds and even fly for a short period of time. Despite this, you do feel its weight when walking normally. But the Saturn controller is pretty overtaxed here, as every button does something unique and the control scheme isn't very obvious at first, as you have buttons dedicated to increasing and decreasing your speed, while the D-pad turns the top half of your mech. The Saturn isn't known for its 3D capabilities, but I feel this is a good looking 3D game, taking place in wide levels and your robot feels huge next to the small houses. I just love going around and shooting tanks, helicopters and other mechs. This is an awesome Saturn exclusive and the best part, this game is still affordable, with most copies running at around 10 to 15 bucks in Europe and 20 to 25 in the US, so grab a copy while you still can.
Monster Cop LAPD is an awesome run and gun mech game for the original PlayStation. You play as a cop in a dystopic Los Angeles where instead of making arrests, you go around and shoot everything you see in your mech. And I love how your mech looks. It reminds me of Ed 209 from Robocop, except it can also transform into a hover car. Before starting a mission, you can choose your equipment and there's even some secret gear you need to track down to unlock. The game is divided into two sections. In the story mode, you take down criminals through large linear levels. Here, you're guided by Central, fighting a wide variety of enemies and you'll generally run into a lot of 90s attitude. And the best part, you can play with a friend in split-screen co-op. And then you have Precinct Assault, which was my favorite mode as a kid. Essentially, this is an early MOBA before the likes of Defense of the Ancients and League of Legends. Here, you start out with a base and you need to earn points to build tanks and helicopters. Tanks will automatically attack the enemy base, whereas helicopters will defend or attack the area where they're spawned. But building them costs points, and you earn points by claiming neutral turrets, destroying enemy turrets, destroying enemy tanks, helicopters and the other player. You can even buy smaller outposts to get near the enemy base. This mode can be played against a friend or against a computer, and they're all great fun. My only issue here is that the computer is really easy at first, and you have to beat it in the lower difficulties to unlock the harder modes. So, it'll take a while before this mode gives you a real challenge. Honestly, Future Cop LAPD is almost two mech games in one, and they're both great. I love this game as a kid, and I highly recommend it. In your area, watch your step. Intruder alert. Finally, we move on to Front Mission 3 from Squaresoft to the original PlayStation. This is a tactical RPG where you control mechs. Even though it's called Front Mission 3, it's actually the fifth game in the series, but it's also the first game in the series to have been launched outside Japan. So I guess I gotta start here. The game features a pretty intuitive menu system, making it easy to see where your mechs can move and their stats. When attacking, you can choose which weapon you want to use as each one will have different effects. So while a shotgun may cause more damage to the body, a melee attack might completely destroy your enemy's arms, leaving them unable to attack you, and your characters will gain experience with each weapon they use. The game also has a lengthy story between missions. Here, it's similar to a visual novel, where you use menus to talk to people, go to certain locations, and go to the internet. Okay, seriously, what is it with mech games and the internet? Anyway, the storylines in this game are all linear. And yes, I said storylines, because there's two different plot scenarios here and they never link up. So again, it's almost like having two games in one disc, or in this case, maybe one game and an expansion pack. If you're into tactical strategy RPGs, or if you just like classic Squaresoft games, you should definitely check this one out. Just be careful that the visual novel sections can really slow down the pacing of the game. And there you have it. 5 good retro mech games. What were some of your favorite mech games? Are there any games you'd like to see me talk about? If so, let me know in the comments. And remember, this isn't a best of list. It's simply 5 good random retro games that feature giant mechs. Next week, it's Back to Basics with another retro review. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stika's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for a new video every Thursday. And be sure to hit that notification bell icon to know when a new video is out. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!